Okay, let me just uh, share the notes again and uh, go into it. Okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, the life of um, the Lord Jesus and uh, typically when we look at leadership and how he uh, modeled it. Okay, so when we look at uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, his life, his uh, teachings, um, the way he led by example, we see that he was, um, he was someone who came to serve. Okay, so he brought in that very radical um, teaching or concept of servant leadership. So it's it's not about uh, you know uh, my agenda or you know something that I personally want for myself or you know to be served, but I've come to serve, and that is something which um, which really uh, comes through in the life and the teaching of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so we look at Matthew twenty, uh, Matthew chapter 20, 25 to twenty eight. Okay. The Lord Jesus, uh, but Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Okay, um, let's read the uh, next scripture also, John chapter 13, 12 to 15. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So literally and symbolically, the Lord Jesus um, conveying that all important truth that he has come to serve he is the leader, he is Lord and Master, he is the teacher, um, but he sets that example uh, by this act of washing the disciples' feet and, um, and stating that this is an example. So as I have done, so you should do, to, uh, you should do also, right? So, um, so the this this he modeled servant leadership okay servant leadership to serve um so uh, let's never forget that and uh, you know implement that uh, work that out in our roles as leaders you know as spiritual leaders um well it could be that um um well, culturally, or even in you know, you know, Christian circles, uh, church circles, um, the trend could be something else, right? The trend could be something else. The trend could be to, uh, I don't know, not not really do this, but um, but we see that scripturally, you know, this is what uh, if we want to follow the Lord, and if we are called to lead like uh, He leads, He continues to lead, then we are called to do this. Okay, um, but I think the um, the struggle is always between um, you know doing it right. Okay, now we have roles, we have responsibilities. Okay, maybe in a formal setting, you have a role as a leader. You have a you know you have a responsibility as a leader. Maybe as a let's say as a CEO, you have a uh, you have a role. You have a responsibility. You have certain things defined. Okay, this is what you need to do and uh, you know so how can you serve from that role so that's the thing right 
with that role, how can you serve others? How can you lead like Jesus? Okay. Uh, or maybe your role is um, something else. But in that role, how can you be, how can you serve others? Now, that's the, that's the challenge, right? And, uh, and the thing is to do it right uh, without abdicating, you know, without letting go of your responsibility, you know, as that CEO or as whatever, you know, and doing it right and doing it right. Um, so I just wanted to, um, you know, maybe open it up for some thoughts from your side, you know, um, how would you lead as a servant leader? How would you serve others in your role and position as a leader? You know, how would one do it? You know, you can just um, share from your uh, maybe experience or um, from your learnings and, you know, or maybe you have some questions, you know, how does one do it, you know? Um, so I'll just open it up. You can spend a couple of minutes on that. Um, anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I can. I've got an example. Yeah, go ahead. I've got an example, but some, something to say. Um, thank you, Pastor. Since uh, 2020, uh, we've been working with uh, a group of volunteers to just to run things at our local church. Uh, and I found that the best way to to lead the group and the best way to get the results and the way that is profitable for everyone of us is to have to set up a, a goal or to have a a target and then allow people to to work in the best way they know how because mm -hmm. if we try to uh, impose our, our opinion and and our ways of doing things we end up creating uh, conflict and things don't 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 get done and don't get done so that's that's one and the second one is creating an environment or like preparing as a servant leader so you could go before everyone you prepare the way if there's things that need to be done so that other people can come and do their work you do that beforehand so it's like you save them in order for them to to come and save to do their job thanks mm. Thank you, uh, Mangi. Right by serving and being example, yeah, of servant leadership by being an example, by being accountable and diligent in our activities. Okay, uh, by being accountable, by being a person of integrity, and being diligent in our activities. Yeah, um, but typically with regard to servant leadership. Yeah, I, I guess this all this would apply, you know, um, like Mangi was saying, to prepare the way, meaning um, I think that's something what Kennedy is also sharing, like uh, being diligent, um, being an example of servant leadership, what Anita is sharing, uh, shared here. Um, you know, one of the things is that, uh, okay, what has God graced you with? Okay, is it uh, maybe the, the experience, the knowledge, the gifting? Uh, to think, how can I use that to uh, to serve this person, right? Uh, to, so, so, um, so. I mean, typically, I'm you know, using the word serve. You know, how can I serve this person? So, it could be to maybe equip that person, uh, maybe train that person, maybe impart some skill into that person. You know, even in doing that, you're actually serving, right? You're serving that person. Uh, and it's it's taking something out of you, right? Um, and especially if it is not something to do with, um, if it's something to do uh, with outside of uh, you know your uh, work environment, even you know, uh, uh, or to to um, you know, which would which would actually require going out of the way to to um, you know to bring some learning to bring some training into that person's life and uh, you know that would be uh, that would be a great way of you know serving 
um, that person, you know, as a leader, right? Um, maybe you notice some things that are uh, that are that the person is struggling with, right? That the person has challenges. So you know that the expectation is that the person needs to deliver. Let's say deliver on time, deliver effectively. Uh, you know, deliver a piece of work. You know, do something. Um, but you see the challenges, and maybe that person is not able to see those challenges themselves. And so, to bring in that learning, to bring in that skill, to maybe to bring in that equipment, uh, you know, that YouTube video, that resource that would, you know, help that person uh, overcome and uh, and and go far go beyond right uh, their challenges okay so we have beth sharing something here regarding servant leadership some people respond really well and step up when they see servant leadership and they follow in the same heart but some just sit and watch and allow the leader to do it all even if they are given a role they will just do the bare bones to accomplish and usually lead by asking others to serve okay so how does one mentor such people yeah so um yeah, so one is, I think, uh, the first step is to clearly define those roles, you know, even in a, in a setting like a, like a church or maybe in a volunteering kind of, a, a, you know, situation. Uh, let's say, you know, there are volunteers and to, to, to define that, to clearly define that and say, okay, this is a role that, uh, uh, this is the role that this particular task or this, or this task requires this. Okay, it could be uh, to show up on time. It could be to carry these ten things that this response responsibility requires, and to and to do it well. So it's basically a description of that task you know, to to ensure that the person or each person uh, understands that. Um, and you know, as a servant leader, well, you know, it's like this: we are not. Uh, you know the mistakes. I think many times we make. Um, you know, others could also share. You know, uh, um, the mistake sometimes we make is that we, you know, completely take over that other person's role. You know, the person already has a role, already has a task defined. Uh, we we do it for them, not just once, but consistently. You know, every time that person slacks off we step in and do it because the task needs to be done and not really address uh, or bring in correction, you know, not really address uh, and say, okay, this is where, uh, uh, this is the standard, but it's not been met. Um, you know, can we talk about why it has not been met, right? So uh, if we step in and rescue that person, uh, well, once or twice is fine, right? So that person is unable to do it. You step in and you do it. But if the person, like you uh, described, Beth, you know, if if it's more to do with attitude uh, and not really, you know, uh, about skill or ability, it's not about ability or inability, but it's really attitude. Um, then that addressing that is also serving, you know, being a servant leader. You know, say, like let's say, you know, your your CEO. And the toilet is needs cleaning. Well, as a servant leader, we should not hesitate to take the mop and clean. You know, uh, okay, I go there and then it needs cleaning. Uh, I'll do it, no problem. You know, I don't see people around. The person who's supposed to do it is maybe not showed up today. You know, I just roll, you just roll up the sleeves. I say, okay, let's let's get it done. Okay, but if that becomes a pattern, then we are. It is actually. Uh, you know, we're not really fulfilling our role. Uh, that that CEO is not really fulfilling the role because the CEO also needs to, um, you know, see that everything is functioning well. The overall, uh, you know, uh, the organization is operating well. So, which means that this person who is tasked with this particular responsibility, who's getting paid uh, for this particular responsibility, is 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 not doing it. You know, it becomes a pattern. So, uh, so in that sense, why? You know, is it inability for some particular reason? Is it uh, is it attitude, right? So, so servant leadership is really to help that person out in that way, right? Uh, if it's attitude, well, fixing attitude is uh, is a lot. Um, 
challenging, a lot difficult than fixing the, you know, the skill. Um, yeah, so mentoring such people would would mean that one has to, you know, look at that, uh, look at that problem and say, and have a talk and say, this is a problem, this is not done, and uh, it needs to be done. Um, um, yeah, I, I hope that helps, Beth. Um, another question from Kennedy, what is your take on churches that have electoral colleges, which at time ushers in leaders who have some character flaws, hence leading to uh, yeah, guru mentality? Okay, so that model in a church governance, Sorry, or a church structure which um, which has um, a leader. Mm. Yeah, that's that's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. So one has to really pray. One has to pray for the second uh, in position to that leader. That uh, that that second in command or second in position will be able to bring in, uh, you know, bring in counsel. Uh, address character flaws, etc. Yeah, I I see your point, Kennedy. It's 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 uh, it's not a you know it's not a pat solution, right? It's not an easy thing. It's uh, it takes time uh, and effort, and sometimes it's not solved till the next election, right? Till that leader is replaced, it's not solved. But uh, I'm sure there you know a, a, a church that has this kind of a structure. Uh, hopefully, we'll also have uh, some process to address the character flaws of the leaders, right? Some character, some forum where these flaws can be mentioned, addressed. Um, some accountability process, maybe. I don't know. Uh, if that process is there, then that process can be followed. Okay. So. Uh, Interesting, Beth's uh, question. I was just thinking, um, like more from a volunteer kind of thing. So, Tarun, if you're there, I mean, if you're, uh, if, if you can, if, did you face any such thing when it when it came to a volunteer kind of thing? Mm, you know, in people, uh, uh, facing sorry, yeah, that kind of a, reading, reading the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so Beth's question is like, um, you know, uh, people who don't actually step up and do it and, uh, okay, who sees the leader as being a servant leader and then allow that person to just carry out what they're doing. Um, so I was I was just uh, telling Beth that, yeah, uh, one thing is to address the problem, to say that uh, this is the expectation, this needs to be done. But, but you know, from a church, uh, volunteering kind of environment, which you've been, uh, you know, in for many years. Uh, but, so I just yes, wanted to know. Uh, like, yeah. In fact, it's very unusual when it comes to volunteering because they want to volunteer, come and serve. Uh, they either serve being there or they are not there. But it happens in a corporate setting uh, that if you are uh, really playing the servant uh, leader and you're taking up someone's role and doing, uh, that may not be a true servant leadership. And uh, what happens sometimes, they they just let go of the responsibilities and just live on uh, being there. So there's a management formula that you know, you know people typically use in the corporate leadership. They call it setting up for failure. Uh, like you take away all the responsibilities and then uh, make that role obsolete. Uh, and then they are no more in the organization. <laughs> so that's a, a hard way of doing it. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, the best way is like to uh, uh, check what they are actually motivated for and uh, uh, put uh, design some objectives that uh, are aligned with uh, their motivation as well so that uh, uh, they get involved. It, the reason why they are not getting involved might be because uh, uh, they, they are into something else and they're in the wrong place. So uh, redirect them to the right place. Yeah, thank you. I. Yeah, uh, that was helpful. I hope that helped, Beth. You know. Um, okay. Uh, here's uh, 
Sam has uh, shared something and also asked a question, I think. Uh, servant is someone who follows or orders directions and a leader is someone who uh, orders or gives directions. Um, the word servant leader is in some way an oxymoron and might be confusing, but I also see the word being misused. It's one thing to say I'm a servant leader and another to be one. Yeah, but largely, what is the true definition of a servant leader and how is it different from the true meaning of the word leader where does one draw a line of becoming a servant leader and just a leader well um um yeah sam so uh, okay i will come back to beth's um uh, Beth, you're responding to what Sam has written, I guess. A scenario of servant leader in our setting. Um, the servant leader decides what to do, makes and orders, but he also might help out with following the order with the right attitude. Okay. Okay. W one of the thing is that, um, you know, the servant leader is, is not um, self-serving. You know, it is the servant leader is not feeding one's ego. A servant leader is not feeding one feeding one's uh, position, or uh, you know, bringing oneself to prominence. So a servant leader is not doing anything. That a servant leader is an enabler, right? Enabler, uh, being an influencer for good is also uh, an enabler. So which means you empower the person, right? Um, now, now this is. This is theory, but I know that when it comes to actual work on the ground, you know, uh, it, it's not a smooth sail, right? But but the thing is this: that one is an enabler, uh, enable the person to uh, to be able to do even better, go even further, uh, right? And uh, we see all this uh, in a servant uh, leader. But the thing is, um, uh, a leader with a servant heart. You know, is what the Lord Jesus modeled for us. Um, a leader with a servant, everywhere he uh, he went, he taught, he he guided, he directed, uh, but he also, you know, uh, he he just gave himself up for the cause of the kingdom. He gave himself. He was moved with compassion. He he served. You know, physically it was draining, but he served and uh, he helped people overcome. Right when when we see you know overcoming sin, overcoming um, the oppression of Satan, overcoming uh, you know all kinds of uh, physical infirmities and sicknesses and so on. So he served in that sense, right? So we we can draw from that, right? And uh, so yeah, so uh, to respond to um, your question, Sam, you know uh, I think when we when we kind of differentiate and when we say a leader is someone who orders or gives direction, you know, I think we need to look at it um, in the right way, in the sense, you know, a servant leader would also require to give directions, right? A servant leader is also uh, uh, required to, to give some mandates, to give some orders and say, okay, no, we will not do that. Or yes, we will do it. Right. So it's it's not uh, two different things, right? Uh, a leader doing something and a servant leader. A servant leader, if you if you look at the Lord Jesus, he says, you know, we will go now. You know, you go prepare. Um, this this is what we are going to do. Um, you know, prepare the room. You will find this, and he and he uh, he didn't think twice about uh, you know telling Peter. Peter, go. You put in that hook in the water, and you will you will find the fish. You pay the tax. Yeah, yeah, Rupa, just in a minute. Uh, um, so, uh, so there's no difference there, right? So uh, servant leader is also maybe, um, so, so we, sometimes we, we could be uncomfortable saying, you know, how can I ask that person to do something? How can I direct that person to do something? Well, it's fine. It's absolutely okay. You know, how, or even how can I correct that person? Well, uh, as a servant leader, we don't hold back from any of these things, right? So um, uh, a servant leader, but however, I think this is helpful, is not self-serving, okay? It's not feeding one's own ambitions and ego and so on. Uh, even in the bigger picture of 
you know the organization's uh, betterment the organization's goals or typically the weekly goals or maybe sometimes daily goals one also looks out uh, for the welfare of the person right um, so i think i think that is where the servant leader uh, differentiates oneself from uh, a lead like the leader said who lords it over the people right uh, who lords it over the people bossing over people i say it is you know the servant leader would would explain hey there are certain things that we need to do why we need to do them and go beyond it's is a is a compassionate leader right um so i yeah i'll stop with that and uh, ask um, rupa rupa you want to share go ahead please yeah rupa so thank you most of it is uh, i wanted to share it is shared by you only one thing i wanted to share is it's about the heart servant leader knows it is his um, he takes it as a privilege to serve people mm. and he wants the people who are under him to do it with all their heart it's not just the ordering and getting getting the things done but the people under him realizing the authority in him and respecting it and doing it with that respect and love is not um, worried about the uh, things being done more than the attitude of the people who are under him that's what i thought i have uh, the insight i got from the lord's leadership mm -hmm. i'm sorry can you repeat that uh, rupa the last thing that you said uh, it's not worried about um, more than that? the that's what i am saying the prioritization more mm -hmm. than the things being done he wants the one who is doing it with doing with the right attitude giving him the lordship and in the heart within the heart those who uh, understand his lordship and his authority over their lives and doing it willingly and happily that's what the change the lord brought over the disciples over the period it's a journey i don't i don't say it's immediate but it's mm. a journey right thank you sir right um, thank you okay. thank you rupa thank you um sam yeah go ahead please uh can you hear me pastor yeah sure yeah, yeah. um so pastor the, the so in in practical sense one so one way i'm where my thinking is from is i'm sorry sam i i think uh there's some noise yeah tell me again please <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. So, uh, Pastor, uh, the confusion for me is, um, like, uh, I think something to do with strengths, uh, abilities. Um, like for example, I think uh, one of one of the values, uh, one one value that I see of a leader is to be able to see the bigger picture. uh in one way it's seeing the forest for the trees you know which 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 way is the so uh, what does a tenure you know what what where where, where are we going as an org or or even missing like any project what's the end result or or uh, even jesus asking peter to put the net down so jesus can see something that peter cannot mm. so uh, so so in one way is you know a a the a leader has something that uh probably the disciple or a, a one who is not a leader does not have like like i think the a leader has the ability to see uh, the bigger picture see the deeper picture see the entire truth mm. whereas someone who is not in that position can only see what's in front of him right so so in in that context i see it more as a function you know like like for example in that earlier example where you gave uh, uh, you know if the bathroom needs to be cleaned mm. uh, probably and 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 the the person who was assigned to has not done it yes the leader can step in take on the attitude of a servant leader and do that yeah but but inst but but that would not be the best use of his time you know he would mm. rather 
be doing something that is that is more aligned to his skills. Maybe he is explaining the vision to the people who need to hear it, right. or is you know explaining the mysteries the, and the and uh, the ones who don't have that skill. That dif- so each one to his calling, to his ability, to his need. So so this whole again the whole idea of a leader trying to do everything would that be the uh, would, yes that would be the right attitude of a servant leader but would that be the most effective or the best use of the leader's time you know so i'm i'm i'm, I'm just tangling and tangling those thoughts yeah yeah so the thing is um, yeah so the thing is uh, the, uh, again the heart attitude is that um, is there's there's a task here so my um, i know my position i know my position in the organization i know you know uh, this is what i'm uh, this thing but i don't find this too demeaning you know this this is a, there's a need here and it needs to be done um yeah obviously you know i um, if there's something else that is pressing uh with regard to time and everything i can uh, you know i can get it done but uh, my my uh, you know my my perspective my or my attitude is that it's it's not anything demeaning right so uh it's it's it needs to be done and there's no one around to do it and so you know as a leader let me do it right uh, but also uh, to fix the solution uh, to fix the problem the, the solution would be to obviously see what went wrong or um, who is who is in charge for that and how they can correct it you know so the best way for me to serve uh, in that uh, in that scenario is to is to do both I, I can do this for the time being as a as a fix uh, immediately but in the long run i would obviously uh, one would you know uh, look at it so yeah so uh, it's both and actually right um it's it's not shirking away saying hey i'm the ceo how can i even you know do this no that is not servant leadership right so um so uh, to to know uh, what we are called to do but also to step in and serve where required right okay um so thanks sam for that uh, um taking decisions uh, this is from prabhaka taking decisions not based on temporary solutions but on longer permanent solutions yeah so that is, i think that's what we were looking at um but sometimes you know you we need to step in in the immediate and uh, and do it uh, but also you know Uh, look at the permanent longer long term solutions yes uh, very true right okay okay any other thoughts any other uh, questions on practically you know living out this uh, um this thing as um or this um of being a servant leader practically you know can i say shares um, pastor Sure, 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 Ani. Go ahead. So, um, uh, just want to share about my uh, church in Delhi, where I was uh, attending. Uh, the pioneer of the church. Uh, he's a senior man, eighty years old, and he would uh, sometimes come to the church when he would be in the city. Otherwise, he would go around evangelizing. So, one morning when I was, we had this church on the third floor, and uh, there was a shoe rack outside the church, and inside the church service was being conducted. so morning when we were i went up the stairs i saw this pioneer the person who has been uh, pioneering this church 80 years old he was putting all the shoes in the rack because people had just left the shoe on the floor not on the shelf and they had started the service inside there was like morning worship was going on so i saw him doing it uh, one by one keeping every slipper on the shelf then washing his hands and going in and uh, he didn't uh, complain he didn't say anything uh, at the end of the service he just requested that please uh, make sure that next time when you come in put so this is how you know this example i saw him doing it and that you know taught me as well as uh, i could feel immense respect for his mm. leadership and he has thousands of churches in india and okay. yet he chose to do mm. that by his own hand so that was one example i remember when we are talking about servant leadership like he would do it first and then uh, request the people to follow the same right thank you thank you for sharing that only thank you yeah so uh yeah, tarun go ahead uh, 
Tarun and uh, after that, Chris. Yeah. Okay, Pastor, just a uh, thought. I see uh, a series of questions from Sam on the same thought. I just wanted to add one mm. good example of servant leadership that uh, uh, from the industry. Uh, one is on the Toyota production system. In fact, when Ford was really doing well in US, um, uh, when Japanese uh, wanted to actually compete with Ford, the the Toyota production system was entirely built on such leadership, where when you walk into a Ford office, you, you can clearly know that there is a glass cased building which is built for leaders and the workers are separately working in a building. But if you enter a Toyota production system, you don't know who is a leader, who is a staff because everybody is in the same uniform. And uh, oftentimes the one who is a leader or a supervisor is the one who is more dirty than the front line because they really get in and do the work. Uh, more than just doing the work, it is the knowledge that they carry. The, the, uh, apart from the power and authority, they also know the things inside out so much that people respect them. Uh, they are more than a head. They are more like a foundation uh, out there. They, they stand and hold the entire enterprise up uh, being there on the ground. So th that actually... Uh, Marx is a better definition for ser servant leadership because uh, it, it's not just doing the task, but uh, you, you are so knowledgeable uh, in that that when you step in to do, uh, uh, you know they they know that you know the entire intrinsics of it. I've seen a lot of uh, very highly skilled uh, technical support uh, people in in the corporate world, like with forty plus certifications in technologies. They just uh, step in when there is an issue and work on something really small, uh, which mm. which anyone can do. Uh, and when they do that, uh, others will see that you know it, they 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 are humble, uh, although they have so much power and authority. Right, right. Thank you. Thanks, Tarun. Yeah. So, um, Chris. Uh, uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor. So uh, I, mean, I just wanted to give also a little bit of perspective to this, you know, this uh, this uh, phrase that you know uh, we use it, that is used, you know, um, called you know self-serving. Um, just just a perspective. I think uh, many times it is it is the you know the the people who who uh, who have you know made you know the person who is who has become a lot more bigger. Uh, you know, maybe in a, in, a, in a church or you know, has has uh, you know uh, made uh, uh, built bigger churches, more churches. Um, it is the people who are who have who are in that church who have made this person uh, appear to be you know more you know more self-serving. Um, mm -hmm. I think many a time there is also the person is. May not have may still be uh, may still be may, may still be uh, no uh, you know have uh, humility and uh, you know uh, exhibit that you know that level of uh, humbleness mm -hmm. and also attribute it that you know that these these are these are uh, uh, this growth in in a church has um, is really uh, you know it, it comes from God because. Um, there are, I mean, I think, it, as I said, you know, the, the the people themselves may have 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 made this person much big, much bigger, and you know, much more uh, sort of, you know, uh, like you know, like a like like a sort of, you know, a, like a guru or a, you know, a, a very like much a bigger celebrity person. celebrity kind yeah, of thing. A celebrity, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, of course, there are, there are some inherent uh, risks over there. You know, the person may may uh, may you know develop that the sense of you know pride and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, become uh, unapproachable also, mm -hmm. but I think that that is one part of it. The other, uh, the other side of it is that um, as as uh, as people, uh, whether in a in a in a in a marketplace or in a in a church environment, as they become more, uh, you know, become most, I mean, strengthened in 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 uh, and become bigger in you know what they do. Um, uh, I don't necessarily see that 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 you know that 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 is a, it's a problem. 
you know uh, i think people uh, in the outside world will you know just point out that you know now he's much become so much bigger now he you know we don't uh, we, we think that he's you know he is, is self serving but i think that, that that is a natural progression that that has happened um because of god's uh, uh, you know uh, part in this where he has made that that person or, the, or that church much 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 more bigger so um i think we have to um uh, you know be uh, aware that there these are things that can happen that can happen and we cannot be just be judgmental and not really know you know what really uh, you know um, what really has happened and um, god's uh, uh, i mean god finally looks at the heart and um, you know the some of these people may, may just be you know uh, as you know maybe you know really doing self self leadership within the community and uh, you know but it's viewed differently uh, within the within the within their own church and also you know out from the outside world so it's just, it's just a perspective that i just wanted to uh, you know bring about here yeah thank you chris yeah so yeah we we don't know all the details we see what is on the outside uh, and uh, definitely yeah there could be um, a person can, could be a servant leader and probably he or she is doing her you know their best and it can be viewed differently because of the prominence and the influence that god brings in right um, but i also want to add that you know as a you know as a leader we can intentionally take some steps um to to protect ourselves you know uh, especially when people you know like you said you know people make uh, people put people on pedestal or people cause that kind of a celebrity kind of a you know a thing around them and as leaders we can intentionally take some steps right uh, whatever practical steps to to really uh, uh, you know not go with that uh, to really dismantle those things uh, i guess you know we could do that also yeah but yeah what you're saying is right we can't be judgmental we uh, you know just by looking at the uh, you know the things um, the paraphernalia surrounding everything and uh, today especially you know in today's time with media and everything you know you can uh, it can actually communicate something and so uh, but also the need for being careful in that right okay um some good thoughts thank you um so um, so sam's question was on you know uh, servant leadership uh, will it be bordering on micromanaging yeah it can sam you know it can become that uh, unless the leader is discerning enough to um to understand his or her role uh, and uh, and also um understand you know that certain things i mean uh, understand delegation is one is uh, you know one's own role and the other's role and uh, and also uh, when it comes to correction when it comes to course correction when it comes to you know bring in change um not really you know micromanage leave room for improvement leave room for growth and uh, yeah so especially when it comes to adhering to you know standards and expectations and all you know there can be you know if i am a perfectionist uh, there can be a temptation to micromanage things and say at each and every step and i you know unknowingly i might set the trend you know set the expectation also where the person comes to me for each and everything and say okay is it is this okay is this okay so um, yeah the, it is possible uh, uh, not just uh, you know for for you know for any leader to be to be um, it is possible to um, set that trend but i guess uh, we need to be intentional about uh, not giving into that yeah um leading rather leading by example versus micromanaging mm. uh, would you like to explain that uh, tarun yeah i think like you know micromanaging is out of fear that you micromanage to ensure things are done right but uh, uh, leading by example is like you you step in and do things that people could follow and uh, learn from so you you don't hesitate to uh, uh, 
step in and show things. But in micromanagement, you uh, expect things to happen in a specific way, and it goes on repetitions, but you are not stepping in. Right. Yeah, so that's the difference. Yeah, thank you. Hey, that's all we have time for today. Some great discussions. Uh, we are still on introduction, <laughs> page one. Um, but yeah, we, we will make progress as we go along. Um, yeah. OK, thanks, Kennedy, for sharing that. OK, so we'll uh, wind up today's class. Uh, we'll meet again uh, next Friday. Yeah, God bless. Have a great Well, sooner than usual, really. Oh. <laughs> Interaction-wise. Interaction-wise, I know, I know, I know. I but know. I think it is good. It is good. Um, I learned quite a bit. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all those who shared and asked questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye. God bless.